I suppose everyone is expecting me to say something uh, that they've not yet thought of themselves. But really, um, we're in much the same position. Uh, I cannot solve uh, all the problems there are, as I still have lots of problems myself. Chosen是因为那个就开始说是，但我们给他后面信息就是因为呢，做的我们老不想吃，我们吃的，我们老也吃，老不想吃，我们吃的，他那信息，呃，老也老也吃，你就吃的用不吃，但他们的就是呢，
artificial understanding ตัดติเอ่อถัดจากอาร์ติฟิเชียลอันเดอร์สแตนดิ้งสุขเสียตัดติเนี่ยกอมสิดูซานะเทนเจวิกตะกันตะเทสัมซุซุกิเอเนจ
ไม่ซีดีคันดิชิจะบะเชกูยอ่ะไอ้สุสุลอกจอชิจะบะดีทวาเนมาจุนจบุนินตาปังตาอันจิงสิคาชุงาจุยกิมิซีกิเอ่อ
We are normally shockingly selfish in our self-fixation, and this is what we need to change. We need to replace our identification with an obsession with ourselves to an identification with an empathy toward others. We need to replace our selfishness with benevolence and altruism. Our selfishness is based upon the misconception that what we think of as I or me has an independent existence. But in fact, no one exists independently of others. It would be far more accurate to say, I exist to such an extent in dependence on others that I am really just a part of others. <laughs> We need to understand interdependence, including our interdependent connectedness with others. And in fact, mere understanding of this is insufficient. We need to experience it, feel it, and recollect it. To the extent that we actually feel the, our interdependence, that each one of us depends upon all others, and our interconnectedness, that we are each connected to all others, we will understand the reason why it is as valid to cherish others as it is to cherish oneself. While it is obvious that it is worthwhile to cherish others for the benefit of those others, it is perhaps less obvious but equally true that we must cherish others if we cherish ourselves because none of us can actually survive alone. We survive in dependence upon one another, and therefore it is only by serving others that we can ever serve our own needs. Go 
simjedan sumgurs ke chiyaman ye be ne di khalas ni ng ma jin di na sa pho be so ru chi ke de di chung bi mi na ng azu khala de ru ma khala de ma ra di ane ane ji ma jin de sa ma ta ra khala de ma ra di shi ni ta chi su su li ya ka ng ye te yun di san di yum zin ka de de ta yun di ma jin di na sa pho be te de ane di yin ba de shi ni ha ko chi Think about how we relate to food. When we eat delicious food, we often uh, utterly ignore uh, the fact that someone cooked it for us. We may have no curiosity about the cook, no interest in the cook. For example, when you go to a restaurant, you go there thinking about the food you're going to eat and what you want to select. You're not thinking about who is it who actually did the hard work of cooking this. And yet, were there no one to cook your food, you would not have food. I suppose if we were dying of hunger because all the cooks stopped cooking or we couldn't find anyone to cook, then all of a sudden we would realize the importance of a cook and we might say, where have all the cooks gone? Because at that point it would be in our self-interest to do so. So generally we ignore anything that does not pertain to our immediate self-interest. <laughs> ま、ちょっと、たまんさんのや、ちりちりでんじゃばさ、トンプやでかなかぶしゃいしゃ。だってディープさんのでディスチケ、さんのねんでんのストンがいちか。んじゅ、すすぎ、かんだるじ、サブ
America, of course, is an extremely powerful and very prosperous country with all sorts of resources and luxuries. And yet, even in, amidst this, we need to become aware of our dependence on others. For example, most of the clothes we wear are not made in this country, they're made in other countries. And they're often made under extremely unpleasant and arduous circumstances, which makes me think that we are enjoying the pleasant fruit of others' suffering. We need to, to gain an awareness of global realities like this in order to be responsible citizens of this world. And with regard to responsibility, a sense, a healthy sense of responsibility is grounded in uh, compassion. We don't undertake responsibilities simply because we should. We undertake responsibilities because we want to. We do so joyously because we feel, because we are concerned, because we are compassionate. Understanding more involvement in and more dedicated some more action, take action some of that is Compassion is much stronger than mere sympathy or empathy, merely feeling something about others' the sufferings. It is more involved than that. It is being willing to undertake a true involvement. It is dedication. And it is much more active. It is feeling that others are part of you and you are part of them. It is a heartfelt emotion. <laughs> I think, therefore, that the uh, willingness to undertake responsibility, the sense of innate responsibility for others, accompanied by courage, the courage to um, joyously bear that responsibility, are necessary roots of compassion. I'm not going to go on about that, however. I want to talk a little bit uh, about experiential love and compassion as opposed to mere understanding, using some of my own life experiences as an example. 
Mi mahu jadi yang kamera begi cawa dekati, bah kamera berkuasa di sana kerjai. Imagination saya ni tak kalah khabar juga. Nyeri liya ni, tak alia jekar jundu ngasih. Di sini imagination saya ni kalah khabar satu. Jasa, orang macam ni, kita angkut demi jimat tu jimbi na. Khabar tu, imagination saya ni tak kalah khabar satu. Many people wonder what it is like being the Karmapa, what it feels like to be the Karmapa. Well, I think it's very, very hard for anyone to imagine. I think it would be hard for even for those who know me well to imagine, let alone for anyone else. Uh, and that Lord Dungu Barulia and the country since so a symbolism of the Tabernacle that's what we get to every two. I don't know to do it. I give a couple of pounds and a cash on it. Stop. That's it. I don't cash it on it. Says I see injuries are to be good to injure some of the injuries are to your mother. ただ、インドネシアじゃん。だから、あんたら、ね、インドネシアだ。そう、ジュメルフィケーシでやってる。生産パジティーカブ、ケネダロディングブルツワディジ、ソスミジナロディスカジュメルフィケーシ。ジェ
However, there was no escaping from this recognition because the basis for my recognition uh, as the Karmapa was the letter left by my predecessor uh, describing the, uh, my birthplace, the names of my parents, and the year of my birth. And since they all matched, I, there was no way for me to get out of this. I remember thinking when I was very young, I would like to ask the 16th Karmapa why he picked me. But of course I couldn't because he had already passed away. And then I thought, well, at least maybe if I'm the Karmapa, I'll get a lot of toys and a lot of friends to play with. But <laughs> it didn't work out that way. So I was brought to the monastery and normal children are surrounded by other children with whom they play and learn together and so on. Well, I didn't have that. There were no other children around me. I was surrounded by a lot of really old people who were very serious, I would even say dour. I was also separated from my parents because the uh, people who found me uh, said, well, he's the Karmapa, you have to give him to us. But while I was still living in Tibet, at least I had the opportunity to see my parents once or twice a year. But after I left Tibet at the age of 14 and went to India, uh, I also uh, became separated from any chance of seeing my parents. I've been living in India for 15 years. During that time, a lot of, a lot of stuff has happened. And that's basically been my journey. Gradually, over time, I came to view my position as the Karmapa as an opportunity to help others. People like me, they place their hopes in me, they have faith in me, they love me. So this has fostered in me a great interest in using my position 
and what ability that gives me to be a real help to others and to the world. I've learned to willingly accept the challenges I have to face and use the opportunity I'm given to help others. But I'm not saying that I don't have feelings, that I don't go through ups and downs, that I don't get sad. I do. I experience the same sort of feelings and ups and downs as everyone else. The difference between me and everyone else is everyone else has at least one person they, with whom they can share their feelings, share their problems. I don't actually have anyone with whom I can share my feelings or my problems or my challenges. So I try as best I can to help others, and I really want to. It's not just because I'm a Buddhist or because I have this position. I really, that's what I really want to do. Understanding Recognize this is how I would explain using myself as an example a compassion that is not merely understanding or understood, but that is courageously applied in our lives. This was brought home to me by the fact that people will actually say to me, you're the karmapa, you have a tremendous opportunity to help others. And this has inspired me to recognize the responsibility that I bear to help others to the best of my ability. But that responsibility is by no means unique to me. This is true of all of us. We all have the same responsibility to help others and to better the world in which we live. We normally are unconscious of it, since no one reminds us of it. And when we occasionally have twinges of feeling, maybe I should be doing something about this and so on, we've learned to ignore those feelings or suppress them. Well, the only difference in my case was that because my position has made my responsibility 
glaringly clear to me. I've had no opportunity to ignore it. But I would say that the responsibility itself is something that we all share. And having said that, uh, I invite your questions. Okay. Questions? How did you use the question? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, just stand there. Okay, yes. Your Holiness. Yes. I'm Cynthia. I'm Catherine. We're sisters, and we actually have a very similar question. So um, maybe we'll ask a few questions, and you can answer whatever you want. Um, we were both very curious about your travels with the students in the universities, uh, wondering what, what you were hoping to learn. I feel a little bit sad that you didn't get to learn, maybe, and you're now teaching a lot on this trip. But um, what were you hoping to learn? Uh, what were your experiences like with the students? And I was just wondering, because you had such a different um, growing up experience, um, if, you, if you relate to any of the students you meet and how you relate to them? If very traditional. ไอ้มีมาบ่ชิเลยคิวเอสสมมุติเดบัชาดิคันดิชั่นบาเรสแต่อีเวนต์เนี่ยสมมุติอ่ะจังหวะนั้นยูนิชิคัลเจอร์ส
very impressed to the point of feeling inspired, not just by the uh, sophistication of their studies, but the vast concern for the future of this world, of this planet that they exhibit, and their um, active and serious interest in finding practical ways to uh, help this world and better this world. That's what they talk about, that's what they ask about, that's what they think about. And this has given me a great hope for the future and has inspired me. Thank you. Having a guru is a necessary is is necessary to be on the path and that's a very personal connection. Now with the digital age it's possible to communicate with many people simultaneously. Monlams and teachings can be simulcast and reach many people all over the globe. As you're using these tools, do you consider there is a danger to the teachings as well as an opportunity? Uh well, first of all, the um, the use of uh, live webcasts and, uh, to some extent, uh, social media as well as the internet in general. Um, has brought a real benefit for many people because, for example, uh, in my case, I live in India, and when teachers live in India, there are many people in other countries who simply cannot afford or cannot easily get a visa to go to India. And in such cases, live webcasts and so forth uh, give them an opportunity to share in the Dharma, to share and form a connection with the teachings that they might otherwise uh, lack. Can feel it, can touch it. So, man, that little thing that I did, that's just a case of charity. Can I have that kind of thing? Can I show you? Eh, that little thing that we soon get over to go out. It's just a case of charity. So, when I was in the middle, when I just saw the family member, that little thing, I'm doing. I'm talking about just getting shade in there. That just social media, that getting shade in there. I'm just talking about that. Can I show you? And then you just think you're saying that, eh? And I'm just talking about that. Some people are just. 
That's something we can sort of touch them, you feel it. The little squad is which Tanya will cause it to me. The little squad that gets me to the other, that the answer to the day goes ready. So, so you give the one or two moves to throw or to your own squad, that gets me to the other something. That the car is very personal, very casual. The, dis, the, the particular matter of the connection between a guru and the disciples, uh, this connection cannot be artificial. It has to be real. So it has to be a much uh, deeper connection than one can easily gain uh, through uh, social media. Because it is a matter of feeling. It is a connection that is almost tangible and deeply touching. And it has to be therefore direct. To give you an analogy for this, even though distant family members may communicate with one another daily by means of social media, they will still make the effort to visit one another in person because they want that immediacy, that intimacy, a proximity of connection. There's simply more feeling in, 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 in person. So in the same way, the relationship between the, a guru and a disciple is that personal and therefore uh, requires a personal interaction face to face. Um, because that will allow for the intense feelings which are part of the relationship uh, to develop. Okay. This way. Yeah. Your Holiness, uh, this question is about the arts. And the more I kind of learn about Tibetan culture, learning about, you know, people that don't study in a monastery, there's so much, there's singing, there's dancing, there's festivals, and the art being a vehicle for Dharma. And my question is, how, how can you see us creating that in the West? Creating a society where Dharma isn't just talks, but the same kind of joyful expression as a vehicle. Um, sometimes I think in the West it can, be, it can get very serious and, and almost tight. Chinyan Simgi Change Kandar Activities, 
Ja, wo ist er? 